Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about making excuses. What have you been putting off that you know must be done? Are you using excuses to keep from moving forward? Do you have a list of reasons why a project or taking action can't be done? Learn how to recognize when you're making excuses as we continue our month focusing on paying attention. Does your clutter own you? Unclear your clutter inside and out. We'll teach you how to become aware of your clutter along with action steps to declutter and create the life you desire. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired by my health. I kept saying to my husband, you know, we need to lose weight. We need to get in shape. I mean, I laugh. I was the same weight from high school. And then when I got married, I was maybe five pounds, around five pounds heavier, but still for a really long time. And I think that's because I was still dating and my parents laugh. I never had food in my fridge. You get married to Tony and have food in the fridge. And I love to cook. I'm a better baker. And so that's just the way I express love. And finally, we stop making excuses. We have started keto, which we'll see how that goes. And I have been doing intermittent fasting, which has really helped me. The interesting thing with keto is that I, I don't want to have this, oh my gosh, I could lose five zillion pounds. And I know that people tend to have the weight fall off quickly. I'm really trying to go for moderate and things that I can incorporate easily, got rid of all the packaged junk that was in our house. And so we're doing a lot better. But you know, we have the, and we're eating clean keto. And will I make a course, I'll make like a peanut butter keto cookie or something like that. But this year we've been really good doing the fasting. And the thing I should say I'd like about keto is I don't need to snack as much. I've noticed for me that that's been a big deal. I need to w- still work on upping my water intake when I did the col- colonoscopy. Dang, I drank a ton of water and which was really good. And obviously the body needed that. So I, I still need to improve on that, but we are going to the gym regularly. We have gotten back into our hiking routine. You know, as you age, there are challenges. So I am trying to do puzzles more for brain health, but we kept making excuses, right? Oh yeah, yeah, we'll do it. And then finally I'm like, when we went to get my colonoscopy and we were sitting in the waiting room and I saw people that were looked younger than me. I'm bad about knowing how old people are that looked in a lot worse health. And then I saw people who were really old and I thought, I don't want to end up like that. And again, you know, there are things I'm, I don't know anything about obviously, and they could have a hereditary disease or something, but I just thought I, we've got to get our weight under control. But we had made, I, both of us had made excuses for ages. Today was also inspired by some clients. When I first started coaching, I was so excited and so eager. And it took me a while because I was like, yay, we're going to support people. This is so exciting. And I wasn't really good at knowing when people were making an excuse. Because one thing, like for instance, when I support people in decluttering or organizing, but let's try this out for a couple of weeks. Now we may need to tweak it. We may need to go in a different direction, but based on my observation and what you've told me, let's, here's where I want to start. And what I didn't realize was that people were making excuses. And then I saw my coach and she was like, they're making excuses. They, your ideas are great. Your ideas work. They just don't want to do it. And I was like, oh, so I've become a little bit better of noticing when people are making excuses but it just hadn't dawned on me. I thought, oh, of course you're coming to get coached. Of course you want to change and you won't make excuses. So I've had to refine that and being able to spot that more easily. If you notice in one area where you're making excuses, that's great. Don't try to look for a bunch of things. Again, remember we are layers, pulling off the onion. We are every week this month, I have a little more challenge to get you going and to notice and observe and pay attention. 
this is something I don't want to stress you out. This is more important that we pay attention than taking action. Again, if you can take action, that's great. But I wanted you to kind of have for the month of June, we have five episodes and let's do something that's akin to like 10 or 15 minutes a day. I thought it's just a good practice and really good to do. Now, if you find a bunch of ways you're making excuses, that's fantabulous. I don't want to stop you from that. I just want you to take that baby step and see where it goes. Now, you might discover a pattern of your excuse making. And once you find that, you say, oh my goodness, I never realize how often I say that. And again, if you have someone close to you that you trust, you might say, hey, can you give me some feedback? Have you noticed me making an excuse? Do I tend to say the same thing? Do I start to do something physical when I'm about to share an excuse with thee? You no, know, our friends and family you know us well can oftentimes observe and say things that we don't always, aren't always able to see. So if you find that pattern, then it might appear more easily to you. I'm going to share with you some ways that you might be making an excuse and not realize. So have you heard yourself saying or thinking any of these phrases? I'm too old, fat, stupid. I'm too fill in the blank. I'm not talented enough. I wasn't born into the right family, into the right class. I come from a poor background. I'm not smart enough. I don't have the support. I don't have the time. Now that's one that I hear a lot. And remember, all of May's episodes deal with time management. And my first tip is if you say I don't have the time, then I'm going to want you to track your time for a week or two. And the big time suckers I see are social media by far or watching TV. I'm going to challenge you really hard on that one. And that's a big one. So don't feel bad. You're definitely not alone because I would say that's probably the number one excuse that I hear. Feel stuck? but have no clue what you need to do to move forward? Would you like to feel energized and excited every day? Are you ready to create the life you desire? Julie's Caraccio supports you in finding the answers within and then taking action to make changes happen. Visit reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie can support you with life coaching. My family and friends don't believe in me. If that's really true, be grateful and find a new tribe to hang with. I don't know if I'll succeed. I just have to share, I don't believe in mistakes. I believe if you learn from them, there aren't a mistake. And your quote unquote failure, if you view it that way, might lead to another success. I think I shared years ago, I created a course. I got some really bad advice. I felt like a failure in that, but then I came out with the books, which I love a bazillion times more. I'm already on a path. I'm not lucky enough. It's not my destiny. I'm not motivated enough, then maybe it's not what you really want or desire. Or maybe you have to figure out what will motivate you. I'm too easily distracted. I don't have enough education. I'll start tomorrow. I'll start someday. Most times, someday never comes, right? That's this nebulous date in the future that we never have to really tackle or address. And you keep saying you're going to do it and you don't. I'm not ready. 
I don't believe I can do it. I don't have any money. You know, let that excuse go. You're listening right now to, in my humble opinion, a quality podcast, and it's free. I'm not the only podcast out there. Whatever you're trying to do, there's probably a podcast, a YouTube channel, a Pinterest board that's going to support you and give you good free advice to get started. There's a lot of good stuff out there where you don't have to spend a lot or you don't have to spend any money. I forgot. It's inconvenient. It's inconvenient to go to the gym. It's inconvenient to spend so much time cooking. Ah, uh, something came up. It's a hope. Bad science. I just have bad karma. Now, wow, that also one absolves you from any responsibility in your life if you go down that route. I need more feedback first. Might work for some, not for me. They have an advantage I don't have. But be aware of those but sentences because there's usually something hanging out on the other end. I wish I could, but I'd really like to, but I know I could do it, but to look for the butt butts in your life. I don't know what I want. I don't have the courage. Now, this is an excuse, but I have to say I really like it because I think that it's very honest and that if you're able to admit that, then that's fantastic. But you can overcome that. You can have the courage. Trust me. And I think there's something that definitely comes with as you age. Because I would definitely not consider myself in general a courageous person and less so when I was younger. But like when I put myself in a much bigger way out there, I was like, you know what? The keyboard warriors are less important than supporting people. And so in that way, I had courage. Not the right time. No one cares what I think. They are forcing me to. That's allowing me to be a pushover, not owning. Did my best and nothing happened. Life's not always going to go your way, guys. I've learned that more than one occasion. I'm overwhelmed. I hear that a lot. And that's why we have these take action. Now, again, I know we're focusing the month on awareness, but every podcast includes take actions. It's just who I am. I can't stop being mean. Just who I am. Big red flag on that one. It's too hard. I'm too tired. I have kids. I have pets. What will other people think? What if I fail? It's a really big one. Again, I mentioned earlier, are no mistakes. I read a great quote about Michael Jackson the other day, or not Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, saying, and this is probably, in my opinion, he's the greatest ball player of all time, and he talked about all the shots he missed, and he talked about how 26 times he missed the game-winning shot, but he had great success. Pay attention to what you're saying and thinking this week and using as excuses. The main goal is to pay attention. If you can figure out why, even better. And I'll do a podcast episode someday. I want to do a podcast, a podcast episode on letting go of your stories. But that's not easy. That's not always easy for people. And I know in the past, and I still do. I find benefit in knowing some why. If I can kind of get down and dig deeper, it supports me in releasing something more completely. I'm not at the point with some things where I can just say, oh, it's a story and release it. Again, if you can take some action and if you were like me and like I got to get in better health and you can take a step towards that this week, fantastic. 
But if we can figure out patterns, notice where or why you're making excuses and how you're making them, that's going to go a long way. Take action from today's podcast. Set the intention to recognize when you're making an excuse. Pay attention to see when you make an excuse. Notice if you see a pattern and when, or perhaps with whom, you use a phrase or think a thought. Recognize any aha moments for why you're making an excuse. Quit making excuses and take action if you're able. On our next episode, we're talking about where you're not honoring yourself. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Clearing your clutter allows you to share your gifts with the world. Get your free self-assessment to discover your clutter priority at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.